All right, uh, so our uh, final talk of the session and uh, actually final talk of the conference is uh, secure non-interactive reduction and spectral analysis of correlations. Uh, and Varun uh, Narayan will give the, the talk. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, my name is Varun Narayanan, and this talk would be dealing with the same model that Hai presented in the previous talk. So we call it <laughs> secure non-interactive reductions, not spectral. Um, so let me begin by uh, introducing the main object of interest here. These are correlations. Specifically, Alice and Bob would be getting two parts of the correlation. Let's say random variables x and y are distributed according to a correlation c that is distributed over the domain x cross y. Now, throughout uh, this presentation, we would be denoting a correlation by its probability mass matrix, probability distribution matrix. So here, uh, the value at the xth row and yth column of this matrix will represent the probability with which uh, x is going to be equal to x and y is going to be equal to y. We can think of x and y as numbers. Yeah, so a good example of a correlation is a binary erasure correlation. So here, uh, as shown in the figure here, uh, Alice would be getting x uniformly at random, and Bob will be getting uh, the same x as y, y equal to x with probability 1 minus p, but with probability p, y would be erased. So the correlation distribution, the probability distribution matrix for the same would be like this. So this column corresponds to the symbol 0, this corresponds to the symbol bot one and so on and so on. Now, when p is equal to half, that is all these numbers are one by one by four, this corresponds to the Rabin oblivious transfer correlation. And classical results show that if Alice and Bob have sufficiently many copies of the Rabin OT correlation, they can compute any function with security. So to motivate our uh, problem, let's consider the following situation. Alice and Bob have a binary erasure correlation with them with erasure probability p, but p is not exactly equal to half. And what they would like to do is somehow derive uh, the OT correlation, Rabin OT correlation, by going from erasure probability p to erasure probability half. Now, they would like to do this without interacting with each other. So Alice wants to locally transform their side of the correlation by running some function, some potentially randomized function A on X to get R. And Bob would like to do the same, B of Y equal to S. And they would like to have R and S correlated according to this erasure probability half correlation. So, of course, they would like to do this securely so that they can use this as a sub protocol in their bigger secure information, secure multi party computation protocol. So let's see uh, a potential protocol that uh, might even work. So here, Alice simply outputs whatever she gets. And Bob, Bob will uh, take their input and further erase it with a certain probability. Specifically, we can choose this probability to be two times one minus p below one. And indeed, if they follow this particular scheme, whenever p is less than half, they indeed get r and s to be correctly correlated. But this is not secure. Why is this not secure? Because in the Rabin OT, whenever uh, Bob receives a bot, they have no idea, they have no uh, uh, guess about what value x could have been. But over here, note that Bob is sometimes getting an actual symbol that's either 0 or 1, and then it is reporting an erasure. So in that specific instance, uh, the security breaks. 
So let's try the, another attempt. Here we'll use two copies of um, the binary erasure slash p. And then uh, Alice is going to XOR x1 and x2. And Bob is also going to do the same as long as y and y1 and y2 are valid, not non-erasures. And whenever either one of these are erasures, they output a bot. And here things are secure. Why is this secure? Because if uh, if both these uh, messages are uh, non-bot, that is belong to zero and one, then Alice and Bob are going to output the same value because x1, x or x2 equal to y1, x or y2. But when either one of these is bot, then Bob has no idea what Alice's output is because it, it's pretty much masked by the input that is not known to Bob. But something to note here is that interestingly in the attempt one, we get correctness but not security, but this works for any P that is less than half by appropriately choosing this quantity with the, the probability with which we further erase. But here we are using two copies and somehow we are only able to move from uh, P is equal to one minus one by root two to P is equal to half. And this is a property that we will see going forward too. So how would we define our model in general? And uh, going back to how I began the talk, the model that we will be dealing with is the same as what Hai had mentioned. We would be focusing on general correlations and we are interested in presenting a linear algebraic way of uh, analyzing this particular model. So secure non-interactive reduction. Alice and Bob get X and Y correlated according to a correlation C. And they want to locally apply a potentially randomized uh, function to their input to derive R and S respectively. And as we noticed, when security is not a concern, we just want R and S to be correlated appropriately according to the distribution, the D that is. The D is the distribution that we want to derive from C. But uh, in terms of secure non-interactive reduction, these functions A and B are said to be an SNIR or secure non-interactive reduction of the target distribution D to the source distribution C. If firstly R and S given here are distributed according to the correlation D and uh, then we have the security conditions. The security conditions are the natural security conditions. Alice's view should not reveal what Bob's output is and Bob's view should not reveal what Alice's output is. But note that here Alice's view is just X that Alice got from the correlation. So it simply translates to, uh, so this is security against Bob or Alice's security guarantee. It says that Alice, Bob's view, which is Y, does not reveal anything about Alice's output R conditioned on uh, his own output. So R should be independent of Y conditioned on S. Similarly, S should be independent of X, which is Alice's view conditioned on R. So the fundamental question that we ask is when can uh, a correlation D have an SNIR to another correlation C? So in this work, we will be seeing an a linear algebraic tool, which we call the spectral analysis toolkit to analyze statistical SNIR. This is something that we will come into in the next slide itself in some detail. And we will use this toolkit to obtain uh, exact characterization of SNIRs between interesting classes of correlations. And these interesting co class of correlations coincide with highest presentation. So why study SNIR? We, we got motivated to study SNIR coming from a slightly different point of view than Hai did, Hai et al did. So, so correlations are a fundamental uh, tool in information theoretic cryptography, as we noticed with the Rabinotti. Uh, we can use correlations to uh, promote uh, or facilitate secure computation. Now, SNIR is in, in the sense, the most basic cryptographic question that we can ask about correlations. Can we securely derive a correlation from another? Furthermore, we can think of SNIR as a non-interactive variant of general secure computation. 
And we know that lower bound for secure computation is a deep uh, complexity theoretic question, which has connections to circuit complexity and PAR complexity and so on. So in that sense, this is an easier uh, question that we do not know the answer for. Furthermore, uh, if we think of a, a secure computation between correlations, as in take a correlation and obtain another correlation, in that case, uh, a interactive protocol itself splits into two phases. There's an in initial interaction phase in which Alice and Bob exchange messages with each other. And in this phase, there is no necessity for a security. And then in the final phase, where Alice and Bob have this correlated view that they have developed over this communication, from that, they want to obtain uh, the correlation that they are interested in. So this is, in a sense, a, uh, you know, a local derivation, a secure, uh, non-interactive reduction from the output that you want back to the uh, the view that you have generated so far so so in short uh, secure computation with interaction has security uh, concentrated only in the snir phase of the specific uh, protocol furthermore uh, there is an entire area of non-interactive correlation simulation which is the same problem as that we discussed without the security constraint. And this is uh, studied rather extensively in uh, uh, theoretical computer science and in information theory. And this is the natural secure variant of this particular notion. And there, there are uh, recent uh, series of works on pseudo random correlation generation where Alice and Bob would uh, take a pair of small correlated seeds and they will expand it to uh, a larger correlation securely, but the security is computational, of course, in that setting. And this can be thought of as the information theoretic variant of the same. So what are our results? Uh, so we asked the question, when can we do statistical SNIR from a, from a target distribution D to a source distribution C? And we say that a uh, protocol A comma B is an S a statistical SNIR uh, under certain conditions. So let me uh, back off a little bit. So what is statistical SNIR? So our results would be presented as necessary conditions for the weakest notion of SNIR that we could uh, formulate. So the weakest notion is we just want one copy of the target distribution D to be obtained using arbitrarily many copies of the source distribution C, but with the error in the secure reduction uh, driven to zero with more and more, potentially more and more copies of C. So in this setting, we show that it's sufficient to look at correlations without any redundant symbols. By this, we mean that uh, so two symbols on Alice's side in the correlation is said to be redundant if condition on both these symbols, the output at Bob looks the same. So it's easy to argue that we can uh, merge or split redundant symbols uh, in pre and post processing without any concerns about security. So we can essentially uh, settle for looking at only correlations without redundant symbols. Further, an important observation that Hai also makes uh, is that an SNIR uh, protocol involves only deterministic functions. The, both A and B in this instance can be thought of essentially as deterministic functions. Then uh, our main necessary condition says that the so-called spectrum of a correlation D has to be contained inside the spectrum of the correlation C. Now we will see uh, this notion of spectrum, uh, which is like the, the name of the, tit the title of the talk. So this is about spectral analysis of uh, this particular model. So, and in, in, in the spectral analysis, we'll say that if we take this, if we look at this uh, protocol in the spectral domain, then this turn out to be symmetric in the sense that both Alice and Bob are essentially doing the same operation in some sense. Finally, uh, common information that is present in the source correlation does not really help in, uh, you know, SNIR. 
So common information is something that Alice and Bob can agree on with probability one by looking at just the correlation. And as intuition suggests, you can't get any security from these kind of information that is present at both places. So as an application of our toolkit, we uh, get exact characterization for the statistical SNIR for interesting classes of correlations. And as we saw, uh, highs, uh, in, in high stock, uh, the previous uh, paper presented does a more fine-grained analysis for special classes of correlations, the same, pretty much the same things that we are looking at. And for that, they get results for the rates as well as feasibility. Okay, so to formally define, uh, so am I running low on time? You've got a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the security uh, and correctness of SNIR is defined in the formal way that is, uh, you know, the, the usual way that you define security in the UC setting. And here there is no difference between uh, the semi-honest and malicious because nobody is talking in the protocol. And the first observation that we make is that we can move from a status, a, um, a definition in terms of simulation and correctness, we can move to a uh, an equivalent uh, set of conditions that is described entirely in uh, linear algebraic constraints. So we can say that corresponding to the protocols A and B, there are stochastic matrices A and B. And with respect to the matrices for correlation, uh, correlation matrices C and D, we have correctness written as a particular mat matrix product being close to uh, the, the desired correlation. And the security at Alice would correspond to having a simulator U, uh, which uh, a, a simulator sim sub A, which corresponds to a stochastic matrix U, and uh, we get another matrix multiplication constraint and so on. So our analysis begins with uh, this linear algebraic characterization. So these uh, matrices are nothing surprising. So for example, the matrix A corresponding to Alice's uh, you know, function A is just the matrix with xth row and rth uh, columns value being the probability with which r is output condition on x as input by this function A. So the first observation that we make is that SNIR is essentially deterministic. Uh, yeah, we given a SNIR with an epsilon error, we can always move to another SNIR with a slightly larger error, uh, uh, in which both the functions uh, used are deterministic functions. Now, uh, so yeah, um, so let's look at uh, what we can get with this kind of observation. So going back here. Once we show that A and B are deterministic, we can also show that the simulators have a very simple and direct representation in terms of the protocol itself whenever this is secure. So now using these facts that A and B are deterministic and that uh, the simulators are completely determined by the protocols themselves in a very direct way, we can show that uh, this quantity that is A transpose, C, C transpose, is equal to D, D transpose into A transpose. It's a linear algebraic inequality. And then uh, by simply observing that uh, you can do some simple manipulations, uh, we can show that if D transpose D has an eigenvalue, then that eigenvalue should also be present in C transpose C. Uh, and this is exactly the spectral condition that we were talking about, specifically for uh, these kind of simple matrices, uh, that is simple correlations. So for the simple correlations, the spectral containment exactly means that the eigenvalues of D transpose D is a subset of the eigenvalues of C transpose C. So this already uh, can be used rather directly to show that uh, simple correlations uh, like BSC and BEC uh, <clears throat> have SNIR 
amongst itself, that is SNI, SNIR from a BSEQ to a BSEP, for example, can only occur when P and Q are related in this very special sense that, for example, over here, 1 minus 2P is equal to 1 minus 2Q for a certain fixed value of Q. And the constructions here turn out to be rather simple and straightforward. Now, uh, so the, the, the observation that we made is for very specific and structured correlations in which uh, the marginals are uniform and uh, the, the correlations itself have like the same domain size on both Alice and Bob side. But when we want to generalize it to, uh, you know, arbitrary correlations, uh, the object that turns out to be of interest is not exactly the correlation matrix, but the so-called correlation operator matrix. So it is the correlation operator matrix itself can be computed as uh, a the correlation matrix pre and post multiplied by uh, the diagonal matrix corresponding to the marginal of the correlation on Alice and Bob's side. Uh, and the interesting thing about the correlation operator is that when we take the SVD of this operator, it shows a lot of properties uh, that uh, have that have been found to be meaningful in uh, previous analysis of the correlations. So uh, I, I hope that everybody knows singular value decomposition. It is essentially talking about how much the matrix expands any vector along the different directions. Uh, yeah. So, um, so in, in the general setting for an arbitrary correlation, the spectrum of the correlation turns out to be exactly the singular values of this correlation operator. And that is specifically the non-zero singular values of this correlation operator. And yeah, just to uh, give an idea about what we mean by cor correlation operator. So when we look at the spectrum of this correlation operator, we will see that they fall in this uh, interval between zero and one. And the second largest value of this is the maximal correlation. In fact, uh, the correlation uh, the spectrum of a correlation is closely related to uh, the so uh, several spectral graph theoretic quantities uh, related to the bipartite graph representing the correlation. Yeah. So and another nice property of the uh, the spectrum of a correlation is that if I take like n copies of this correlation, the spectrum of that would be just an n-wise product of this. And uh, we, our analysis is mostly based on first going from the linear algebraic constraints that we had for SNIR to a spectral domain and over there uh, realizing a lot of structures and showing that um, because of the structure we can show a an inclusion of the spectrum of D in that of C and showing that the protocols for A and protocols for B in the spectral domain, they have a mirroring property. And uh, very interestingly, uh, with some painstaking analysis, you can show that these properties uh, are robust to errors in the sense that when we go for epsilon error in the SNIR, these properties only vary in a more, in a natural way, or only fluctuate in the most natural way. So, yeah, so the, the, the kind of results that we get for this exact correlations uh, coincide with uh, that in uh, High's result. Um, so other results, uh, we, we also show the, we, show, we also show impossibility for more uh, larger correlations, uh, like OLE and OT and so on. And we can also show that uh, SNIR uh, cannot be done using only a single type of correlation. For example, we cannot use a single type of correlation to get all sorts of uh, correlations in this model. Um, yeah, finally, we show that uh, common information is not uh, useful in this model. Uh, so to conclude, we used uh, spectral analysis 
to reveal a lot of structure in SNIR, and we characterize SNIR for a lot of natural correlations. And an interesting question that is left open is the question of decidability, that is, can I get uh, a correlation from another correlation in this model? And we settle this question in an upcoming follow-up work. And uh, the main open questions of interest are, one of them is rate, in which uh, the previous paper made some interesting advance and uh, the decidability when you allow like let's say one directional communication all right that's all thank you all right uh thanks are there any questions uh if you have a question please come to the microphone Okay, it's working, that's great. Very elegant, love this talk, love this result. Thank you. Um, I have a, a general question about the reductions basically, and um, most of what you have analyzed uh, looks at primarily independence among results, like A's result is essentially independent of B, uh, conditioned on B's outputs. Yeah, this is um, the security notion that we yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. And, and that actually has a lot of relevance when you look at say quantum protocols and I even see. in privacy amplification yeah. kind of results and when you relate them to uh, simulatable, simulatability and or UC proofs. Okay. Um, and the aspect of that that I wanted to ask you about is that it is possible in some of these cases for Alice to have something that is independent of Bob's result, mm -hmm. but still somehow bound by Bob's results. So there are committal aspects of I this see. as well. So these are concerns in the quantum realm because for, of entanglements and so on? For example, in the quantum, yeah. that, that's that's a very good concrete example. Indeed, yeah. It, it uh, does in fact happen in yeah. classical as we well. Were, we were curious yeah. about exactly how this particular tool uh, goes through in uh, more general models, okay. but we, we didn't quite uh, make enough connections about what this this particular spectral operator or, or the correlation operator is with respect to uh, other domains but yeah this is an interesting injection that okay yeah. thanks and the, the half of it that was just a motivational thing but the half of it that, that that's that, that i wanted to ask which i think you're answering is that the binding nature of the outputs where yes. alice's output is bound by bobs yeah. but still independent information theoretically of it yes. isn't something yeah. that you really have covered so far indeed. Yeah. okay and and is maybe yeah. open in this thanks yeah. thank you all right, uh, so we have a message uh, from our uh, program chair to, to close out the conference, uh, but let's uh, quick uh, give a round of applause for all the speakers of the session. I just wanted to uh, thank you again for uh, you hear me? So this was the last uh, talk of this session and the last talk of the conference. I wanted to thank you again for coming and again thank all the authors of of the papers and see you in a year in Lyon. Thank you.